Welcome to Wisconsin in Focus. I'm J.D. Davidson. Four years after the 2020 election and after a court case that seemed to settle things, ballot drop boxes are back in the news and in the courts in Wisconsin. The Supreme Court heard oral arguments this week over a case that could overturn a 2020 decision and put ballot boxes back across the state. Joining us today is Ben Young, Wisconsin contributor for the Center Square. Ben, tell us about the arguments that took place this week. This is a great snapshot of what the liberal majority Supreme Court in Wisconsin means. We just settled this question of ballot drop boxes, the conservative majority court that was in place for a decade in 2002, took a look and said, no, ballot drop boxes are are not allowed. There is nothing in state law that says a clerk in go ahead and pick your county or go ahead and pick your city that a clerk can decide we're going to put a box out in front of the local grocery store. We're going to put a lock on it and voters can just drive up and drop their absentee ballot there. You you get to vote absentee through the mail or in many cases, you can go to the clerk's office and they'll have a a, a drop box inside the clerk's office or a a basket or sort of like a blockbuster video where there's a little slot. Ah, You put it in and it, it falls down and you've dropped off your absentee ballot. Uh, but this liberal Supreme Court decided to revisit that case because a liberal voting rights group wants them to. And the arguments, the questions that the court asked were very, very clear. The three conservative justices asked repeatedly, where in state law does it say that ballot drop boxes are allowed? Because it's speaks specifically about how you can absentee vote. It speaks specifically about the powers that the Wisconsin Elections Commission does have. It speaks specifically about the limitations that Wisconsin lawmakers intentionally put, as uh, Rebecca Bradley put it, that the lawmakers are clear in their intent that they wanted absentee voting, which is what ballot drop boxes are a form of, to be heavily regulated. And the answer from the voting rights group is, well, we understand, but we just think it would be better. We, we think it's unfair to tell voters that they can't use this easy operation. And the liberal justices really didn't have any questions based on law. They didn't have any question about the statute. They didn't even really have any questions about the unanswered questions of that 2022 ruling. They just said, well, what if we made a mistake? What if we got it wrong? Are we supposed to just leave that as is or do we get the opportunity to change it? And, you know, this is what the the liberal Supreme Court means in Wisconsin, that there doesn't necessarily have to be a, a firm constitutional question. There doesn't have to be a disagreement between judges in the state that points to an obvious flaw in the law as it is written, that there is a sense that this court is going to do is going to take political cases that are going to have political outcomes and and nothing is more political in an election year than leaving an election loophole wide open. I was a little surprised in reading your story that one of the arguments for the boxes wasn't there's no law that explicitly bans them. Yeah. This doesn't say that you can do it. That has been the defense of several of these arguments on certain laws, number number of different things. Well, it, it doesn't say that we cannot do this, so I guess we can. And that is that is just a, a, a fundamental difference between how conservatives view the law. It's the four corners of the, the statute or the legislation or the public act or whichever term you want to use. Here are the things that we are allowed to do by law. There is a liberal view that says, well, here are the things – that are specified in the law. Everything else, I guess, is fair game. And that's really how we got to the question of ballot drop boxes, that there's nothing that says you cannot just create a way, a new way to vote in the state. And this is where we are in front of the Wisconsin Supreme Court. This was very similar to Racine 
had a mobile voting van that they would use. They would take this van and drive it around. And well, this is this, the van is an extension of the clerk's office and it's manned. So it's not a drop box, but we'll drive up and people can bring us their absentee ballots and we're bringing voter access to the people. The Supreme Court had to say, no, you're, you're not allowed to do that. There's nothing that allows you, no state statute exists that says, oh, and if you really want, you can, you can get an old ice cream truck and drive that around town and pick up votes that way. That is exactly where we are in Wisconsin, particularly when it comes to these uh, election loopholes, I think is the, the, the best way to explain it. And, and this goes back to, to the 2020 election. It really does that you had, you had ballot drop boxes. You had an explosion in what was called indefinitely confined voting. And this was a law that was written for people who are shut ins or who physically cannot leave the house to get to a a polling place. And the idea there is that you have a, a small number of people who you want to protect their constitutional right to vote. And so you're not going to make someone who is elderly or physically incapacitated. You're not going to force them to get a witness to come to their house. Essentially, what indefinitely confined voting means is that you can vote without having to show voter ID. Well, in 2020, for the first time in forever, you had a massive explosion in that. Well, because of covid, the the liberal supporters would say you had democracy in the park. You had the Zucker bucks. You could go up and down the list. And those those loopholes were very quickly identified by the legislature. And since 2021, lawmakers have tried to clarify, spell out in a new law what is and what is not allowed. Ballot drop boxes would not be allowed under legislation. But every time that legislation passed through the Republican controlled legislature, the Democratic governor would veto it. And so, again, we're back before the liberal Supreme Court the new liberal majority Supreme Court to settle these questions. And it, it looks very much like the liberal majority is going to allow drop boxes just based on the idea of, well, like you said, it's it's not technically illegal. So I guess we can do it. So this will be interesting over the next couple of months to see. I, I would assume that uh, a decision would come quickly enough to be able to hit the November general election. So it'll be a story that we will absolutely follow. Ben, thanks for joining us today. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. Knowledge is power, and you deserve to know what happens in your state government. That's why the Center Square's reporting zeroes in on state authorities publishing stories that show where your money goes and who spends it. The Center Square gives power to the taxpayer by tracking politicians' use of the people's money and demanding transparency from state-run agencies. This is how the Center Square equips you, the American taxpayer, to hold your state government accountable. Sign up now for your state's Center Square newsletter at thecentersquare.com. 